In the past 12 months, I have managed to successfully save over 20,000 pounds. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing some of the things that I did to achieve that and how you can too without having a high paying job or business. So if that is something you are interested in, hit that like button down below and let's get into the video. Okay, so saving 20,000 pound in a year on a low income is not going to be the easiest thing that you are going to do in life. But the key thing to remember here is that everything with this is absolutely possible. When I look back, I never thought I was going to be able to achieve anything like this, not even half of that amount. But the reality is you only need to tweak a couple of things before you are well on the way to reaching that milestone. So let's get into them right now. All right, so the first thing that I did and the thing that I think everybody should do before thinking about changing anything is assessing their current income situation. And of course, it takes no genius to work out that somebody earning £60,000 a year is going to be able to save quicker than somebody earning £30,000 a year if they both had the same outgoings. But unfortunately, not everyone can earn that high salary. And for me, that certainly wasn't the case as well. So about three years ago, I sat down and wrote down my income from my job, which was only about £33,000 a year at the time. Like I said, nothing ridiculous. What outgoings I had each month and what money I would have left to be able to save. And what I managed to work out by the end of that was I was able to save around 600 pounds every single month for the current income situation while I was in. This is actually really good in my opinion, but it was nowhere near the target that I had to meet every single month to be able to reach that 20,000 pound a year goal. However, there are some changes that you can start making straight away that will make an instant impact on how much you can save every single month. And that's exactly what I did. And basically what I did was I had four main changes that I made. And what I'm gonna do is get into them now. All right, so the first thing that I did was a complete overhaul of where I was spending money. So at the start, like I mentioned, I worked out exactly how much money I was currently earning, and I did exactly the same for where I was actually spending that money. One really good way to be able to do this without having to write things down, because we all know we hate using pen and paper, is by using a banking app called Monzo. If you haven't already heard of it, you can go and check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. But basically what they allow you to do with their internet banking app is actually categorize your spending into different industries and what you can also do is actually have a look at the breakdown of the stores and you can see exactly where you are spending all of your money and then of course from there after doing that I started to notice trends where I wasn't being as efficient with my money as I should be one thing that stood out to me was that I was spending way too much at my company's canteen where I worked at the time which was completely overpriced and I could save so much more money just by bringing my own lunch to work oh and just on the side note, doing this breakdown of your expenses is a really good thing to do at the start, but it's also something that I really recommend doing every single year because just like anyone, I fall into bad habits and it's something that I recently did around two or three weeks ago and I realized that I was spending so much money at a certain shop. It was the co-op in my local uh, town and um, I could save so much more money by going somewhere else. And like I said, I'm preaching on how I managed to save money, but that doesn't mean that I can't fall into bad habits as well. And I managed to notice that by doing this spending review. The second thing that I did is maybe something that is a little bit unique to me, but basically what I noticed was that I spent a lot of my time driving to work when the reality is my company's office was only actually based 1.5 miles away from my flat. And being completely honest with myself, I told myself that I should really be walking this distance. And a few things come into my life which actually forced me to have to walk to work anyway. But one thing that actually happened was I managed to save so much money on my petrol and I know why I was just saying maybe it's 1.5 miles there, 1.5 miles back. That is actually three miles a day and when you times that by five days a week that I was walking to work and roughly 48 weeks of the year that I was having to do that, it soon adds up. So yeah, Basically, I started walking to work, and whilst I used to moan about it a little bit at the time, especially in the winter months, of course, um, it's actually something that I really do miss now, now that I currently work for myself, fully at home and stuff like that. Um, I used to be able to put on a podcast, I'd listen to some audiobooks, maybe just some music if I wanted to chill, and I could just take everything at my own pace. And whilst at the time I never thought I would miss something like this, it's definitely something that I miss now. The third thing that I did, and this one is gonna be a harsh truth to a lot of people watching 
this maybe, that is trying to save more money, and that is realizing that I was being way too fancy. I knew that if I was going to be able to save 20,000 pounds in one year on low income, I knew of course sacrifices were gonna have to be made along the way, and sacrifices were what I made. And basically some of the sacrifices that I made was not going out to eat as much, I completely stopped buying designer clothes, and the other thing that I did over the past year was I didn't go on holiday once. Now I will just say for full transparency, if it hadn't been for the virus that we're currently in, I probably would have gone on holiday, but at the end of the day I didn't because I wasn't allowed to, and now looking back at it, I actually realized that I wouldn't have even been able to reach that milestone if I would have done that. Okay, so the fourth and final main thing that I did around managing my money before I even thought about ways to earn more, and that was saving my spare change. Now, hear me out guys, this obviously sounds very easy, and it was back in the day when we all carried cash around with us, we would simply just put our change in our pocket and take it home and put it in the money jar, right? Which of course we can still do by the way, but when I come to think about it, we do now live in such a digital society where we are paying for everything on our cards or our iPhones, and we just don't get the chance to build up a kind of money pot on the side. And I realized there wasn't really any way that you could replicate that until I come across this personal finance app called Plum. Basically with Plum, it is completely free to sign up. And basically all it does is it allows you to connect your current bank card to the app. And by the way, if you're using something like Monzo where they are very financial technology focused, the integration is very simple. And basically what the app allows you to do is set some certain rules when it comes to managing your money. And going back to the saving spare change thing, one of my favorite rules that you can set is to round up all of your purchases. And basically what would happen is if I went into a shop and I spent let's say £1.60 on a bottle of Dr Pepper, what the app would then do is notice that I spent £1.60 and then it would round it up to £2. So basically it would save 40p. Now whilst this doesn't sound really that much, one thing that I personally did was do a lot of smaller transactions instead of one big one. And by the way, this is a flaw that I currently have. I'm not really much of a fan of doing bulk shopping, I like to just buy things on the go, and I know that I can open up and be transparent and know that there is room to improve there for me, but basically because I was doing so many smaller transactions, this obviously added up quite a lot over time. And just looking back at my account before I filmed this video, I actually worked out that I was saving around 60 pounds a month extra just by using an app like this. So yeah, it is probably worth going and grabbing this completely free app, and just one thing to mention, I have not been sponsored in any way, shape, or form by Plum to mention them in this video, but I do have a referral link which I will leave in the description down below. So after making these four basic changes, I realized I could take my potential savings every single month from £600 all the way up to £850 every single month, which in my opinion is actually such a big difference considering, like I said, I'm only making a few basic changes. But of course, this was still way off the £1,660 pounds that I would have to save every single month to reach that £20,000 goal and I knew I needed to do the next thing which was the obvious one and that was finding a way to increase my income and get my side hustle on. Now just for a little bit of context for some of the people that have never watched my content before, some of the side hustles that I'm actually going to mention that I started here have eventually turned into my full-time business and some of them I still do every single day. However, of course, at the time when I was working out ways to earn more money, I never knew this would evolve into this and basically the first thing that I did which everyone can do by the way is selling old junk that I had laying around my house on eBay to generate some cash. I sold my old iPhone, I sold other general electronics that I had around the house. I remember selling a pair of Beats by Dre headphones. Oh and by the way you know all of those designer clothes that I wasted my money on? Yep. Yeah. I sold all of those too. And basically the sales that I made from that initial kind of two week, three week period where I was selling those items made me roughly 500 pounds. And the best thing was, 
I took that £500, instead of saving it, I actually took it and launched my reselling business, which I will talk about in a second. But after I sold everything, because obviously not everything sells straight away, I had made an extra £1,300 to put into my savings, which was obviously a massive boost. And I have to say one thing, being able to do all of this selling and being able to save all of the money as well, because of course, I'd already worked out my budget and my full-time job at the time was paying for all my bills so I was able to save all of that money it really opened up my eyes to the world of side hustles and I have done things in the past before for example I used to run a small web design business but I never really realized the power of a side hustle until about three years ago and basically from there like I mentioned I started reselling things full time I started going to car boot sales charity shops retail stores buying things for cheap and selling them on Amazon and eBay for a profit. And as I did mention, this is something I still do very much today and it has gone so well, it has actually turned into my full-time business. But my side hustles didn't stop there. I then discovered the power of affiliate marketing, creating these YouTube videos, doing one-off freelance gigs and online coaching. And basically after realizing I could do all of these different multiple streams of income all at once pretty much because they all kind of coincided with each other. One thing I realized was that I could cash in some of the money from the other side hustles but with the reselling business I could reinvest all of the profits that I was making to buying more stock which would of course eventually make me more money. I basically dedicated all of my evenings to my side hustles and the best thing about it I was able to save every single penny like I said because my full-time job was already paying for my bills and the most important thing was the more I earned I kept my lifestyle the same I didn't increase my quality of life or the more luxury things I kept those basic principles that I was talking about at the start of this video but the income increased now one thing that just come into my head was that you may be sitting there watching this video thinking I can't imagine myself doing any of the side hustles that he just mentioned but don't worry guys neither did I I never thought that I would enjoy reselling products on Amazon and eBay I never thought I would be able to jump in front of a camera and film YouTube videos and stuff like this and one thing I have to say is that doing all of these side hustles has made me realize how much I can actually learn about myself since being on this financial freedom journey and it's been such an exciting ride and that is basically how I managed to save £20,000 in a one year period. Now, what I'm going to do is leave one video up here, which is some more tips about saving money. And I'm gonna leave a video down the bottom left, which is some more tips about making some extra money as well for you guys to go and check out if you've got some extra time. Apart from that, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care.